Hello everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and today I want to talk to you about sesamoiditis. As luck would have it, I just finished a podcast on sesamoiditis, so make sure that uh, you check us out uh, on uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, you can listen to the whole spiel about sesamoiditis. But um, we have this young lady who is 20 years old, she's had this um, sesamoiditis for uh, quite a long time now, and really having a hard time walking on hard surfaces. She's on her feet all the time, and it's really altered her gait. Um, so some of the things that we look at are, you know, where is her tenderness? And, and she is, and I'm not going to agitate things, but um, she's very tender on the plantar surface uh, where the flexor hallucis brevis tendons are, and just at the bottom of the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Now, it's very important that when you assess this, that you also assess the rest of the joint to make sure she's not having joint arthritis or some issue inside the joint. Um, if you had gout, that would affect this area also, but there would be a lot of redness and a lot of swelling around the area. But sesamoiditis is very, very tender to the plantar surface of the first metatarsal phalangeal joint area. Now you need to remember those sesamoids act as little lever points, okay? So it helps to improve her leverage when she's stepping off and when she's using her flexor halysis longest. If somebody doesn't show improvement with some conservative measures, which I'm going to talk about today, um, you need to make sure you get x-rays, MRI, to make sure you haven't split that inner sesamoid ligament um, or, you know, fractured the sesamoids themselves. And she has had that done and everything looks clear there, so it's straightforward sesamoiditis. So the, uh, one of the things we've noticed when we evaluated her is that her great toe doesn't extend very well and she doesn't dorsiflex very well. well. This is actually better because two weeks ago I took measurements for orthotics and started her on a flexibility program and that is much improved from two weeks ago. Um, and while in this position, her great toe doesn't extend very well, we taught her how to start stretching that. So she will continue doing that on a regular basis. The way I like to treat sesamoiditis conservatively first is with an orthotic. So if you take a look at this orthotic right here, you'll notice a couple things. We had this area here depressed right underneath that first metatarsal phalangeal joint so that uh, and we also had it made with a soft material on the inside so she doesn't impact it as hard as walking on a hard surface like a linoleum or a uh, ceramic tile or something like that. The other thing we did was we added a little metatarsal bar but we made a depression right here so that that first metatarsal phalangeal joint it essentially falls off the cliff doesn't strike the floor so hard and we put this in her shoe and we went for a walk and immediately she had relief um, and so she's going to use this on a regular basis just to help offload that area she's going to continue with her flexibility she's always going to wear shoes uh, or something that has some cushioning just to take the trauma out of striking that sesamoid area, okay? So that's how I like to treat sesamoiditis conservatively, and uh, if she does not improve, uh, then we will look at uh, an MRI and further diagnostic testing, but I really think this will take care of her issue as long as she continues with flexibility and wears good shoe wear and, uh, and a good orthotic. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and uh, please give us a thumbs up if you like our uh, videos, and um, subscribe to our channel, thanks.